Hey guys, how are you doing? Today I want to make a primitive fishing kit and this is a fishing kit that I have made a couple of months ago and it's a really good kit but it's almost completely made from plastic so here at one chamber I have this compass here and then at the inside I have my fishing hooks and lures then I have this um, cork which I want to use as a bobber and I also do have some survival stuff, a signal whistle, a small knife, and a ferro rod. And that's for the big chamber. And here at the smaller chamber, I have a magnet inside of the lid. And I have this small bait chamber. And of course, I'm using plastic fishing line. So this kit is really awesome, but it's a modern day style fishing kit. And I personally have set myself a goal. From now on I want to create stuff out of renewable resources like wood for example and I want to see if today I can create the same fishing kit but out of bamboo and other wood maybe and maybe instead of the hooks I'm going to use some bone or primitive fish hooks so yeah I want to make it as primitively as possible and see if I can get a really nice kit going. All right, so for my primitive fishing kit, I'm going to use some bamboo and I'm not going to lie, I bought this in a hardware store in Austria and it's really hard to find bamboo in Austria, which is this thick and that's the reason why I bought it. And actually I had to go to two hardware stores because in the first one, uh, this size of bamboo was split all the way through and this was the only one that I found which didn't have any splits. And the bamboo stick is thinner here and it's getting much thicker here and if I take this fishing kit it has the perfect size so I definitely want to have my primitive fishing kit the same size and it's the size of about this section here this internode which is perfect so now I want to cut off the bamboo here so that I still have a small chamber for the bait chamber and then also I have to cut off the bamboo here as well Okay, that's the piece that I already have and now I'm searching for a cap part. I think this might work here. Okay, now let's see if this fits. Yeah, it fits pretty nicely. Okay my friends, so these are the tools that I want to include into my primitive fishing kit slash primitive survival kit. So I've made a couple of hooks and I'm not going to lie, I've used power tools and these are two really nice hooks and I've made them from deer antler. It was actually a, a red stack antler and yeah, these two hooks are really nice. They are ready to go and they are ready to be mounted onto a fishing line. Yeah, then I have these fishing hooks, um, it's basically fish bone. I believe that they are good for smaller fish because they are not as sturdy as these fishing hooks of course. And you basically mount the fishing line in the middle of the fishing hook and then what happens is the fish eats the bait and when it pulls on the string the fishing hook will make this inside of the throat and that's how it sticks um, in the mouth of the fish and then you will have a fish on this primitive hook. And the same goes for these kind of fishing hooks. They are basically sticks which are sharpened at both ends and you attach the fishing line right here in the middle and it does the same thing inside of the mouth of the fish. So I have two of these stick fishing hooks which I made from antler as well. Okay then I have this unfinished hook. This is just um, yeah, a sharpened piece of antler and I still have to mount this one onto a fishing rig. Then here I have two needles, um, two primitive needles. They will come in handy when you want to sew some leather for example. 
And next here I have a piece of fat wood, which is always great for fire making. Then I have these two beads and I want to use them as sinkers for fishing. And of course I'm going to use my piece of cork as a bobber. Furthermore down here I have a fish spearhead. Pretty primitive. Unfortunately spearfishing is not allowed in Austria. So I just want to include this tip here for nostalgic reasons. And the same goes for my bro head here. Um, it's not allowed to hunt with bow and arrow in Austria. But I still want to include this broad head because it's so nice. And maybe I'm going to make an arrow and just uh, use it on targets. So we will see. I will include this into the kit. Now for making arrows you need glue. And this here is pine bitch glue. And it's a really solid glue when it's hardened out. As you can see. And you need some kind of flame to reheat the glue so it basically works like hot glue. And I've made this one from pine pitch, which is pine resin and charcoal. And also I have included fibers of deer's cat. Then here I have my fishing line. This is just some chute twine. And then I also have some small blades, which are from flintstone. And they are really fine and have sharp edges, so with those you can gut fish. And to keep the edge sharp on the flintstone, you need some kind of tool, like this one here. This is basically the end of a red stack antler. And you can use this to nap off some flakes from your flintstone. And also this tool has a hole. So I can attach a stick to it, make it longer, and then I can use it as an indirect percussion stick. And last but not least, I would like to include this deer antler all into the kit. With this one you can punch some holes into leather, and afterwards you can sew up the leather with some needles. So this is going to be my fishing line, but chewed twine is very visible to the fish. And there's really only one material that you can use which is a little bit similar to modern day fishing line. And let me show you what I mean. So here I have the back strap um, sinew of a deer. This came from a deer which was a roadkill actually. So I just cut off the back strap. And once this is smooth, you can use it and make some really fine fishing line, just like the modern day fishing wire. Okay, now for the cordage, I think that this chew twine is not enough. It's only like three meters or so. So I'm going to save it for a different project. And I was searching my basement for a different kind of um, natural string. And I found this one here. I'm not sure what it is, but it seems to be really strong. Ugh, cannot break it. Look at that. Ugh. So yeah, definitely I want to use it for my fishing kit. And also I have more... Of the string here. So now I'm using the Canadian jam knot to attach the string to my fishing kit. Okay, so that's really good. It sits tight and now I'm just going to wrap this thing with the string. Maybe I should attach the string to the to the wood using the glue because I don't want this to come off. Okay. So now this sits tight and doesn't move anymore. Okay, that's it. So now let's see if... Oh yeah, this is pliable already. Okay, now I want to make myself a little bit of 
um, fishing wire, natural fishing wire. And for this I'm going to take the fine strands off of here. Like that. That's pretty good. Now that I have some of these fine strands, I want to make them into cordage. Cordage that I can actually use. So I'm taking this long strand and then I just start twisting it. Twist, twist, twist until it makes a loop. And then I just continue weaving the string. Well, it's not weaving, it's more like rolling and twisting. It needed me like 10 minutes to make this much of cordage. Yeah, this is really strong. Strong cordage. So now I'm going to attach this to one of my hooks here. I think I want to use this one. And to attach the string to this hook, I'm going to use the constrictor knot. So this basically starts like a clove hitch. So this is going to hold really, really tight. Yeah, that's tight. So now I want to cut off the tag end. We don't want to have too much cordage hanging off here. And that's our first fishing hook, which is ready. So now you just need to take a um, earthworm, put it over the string and the hook like this, so that the fish cannot see the hook anymore. And then when the fish bites, this will happen. Okay. And now I can attach this fishing hook to the main fishing line. And yeah, guys, this is really strong. You won't rip this apart easily. Okay, now we have our first fish hook ready and what I want to do is I want to put it into that bait chamber and for that I have cut a small slot into the bait chamber at one side. So now I can take uh, my fish hook and it doesn't matter if it's baited or not but I will just slide it through here and then I can store it inside of that bait chamber. And this way it's safe for transport. So now I can close the cap here. And the bait won't fall out. And you won't hook yourself. So this way it's really safe to store. And then when you want to go fishing again, you just take out your fishing hook and your bait. And then you can go fishing. Okay, here I have finished another fishing line, which I now want to attach to the bigger hook because I believe it's the better one. So let's do another constrictor knot. One loop, a second loop, the second loop behind the first loop, going through here, tighten everything. Let's see if this holds or not. Ah, yeah. It's holding. Oh. <clears throat> Cannot break it. Nice. So at the end I want to make this loop again. So now I have my second fish hook ready to go. Nice. Okay now finally I can pack everything into the fishing kit. So here at this end I have my ready to fish fish hook and at the other side I'm going to fill in all of the other things. Okay, so I only had space for one glue. I leave the other one out. Now my fishing kit is completed and I really love it. 
it's pretty awesome no plastic needed and the next time I go fishing I will definitely try it out if it's working and if I can catch some fish with the primitive fish hooks and is this one better here? Of course it is. Um, plastic is much more durable, it won't crack too easily, so the bamboo here might crack one day. And here you have the best fishing line that you can wish in a survival situation. Uh, you have perfect fishing hooks and a compass, a magnet, other stuff in here. So in a survival situation, in a real one, I rather would want to have this one. But I want to train my survival skills, especially my primitive ones. And that's why, yeah, I just want to try out a more primitively made fishing kit. And I think it's really not too bad. So I believe that this will be able to catch some fish. It's just unfortunate that it's too small to fit a boat reel kit into it. Otherwise, I would have done that and added a boat reel kit. But hey, you can't have everything, right? So... I think this is pretty cool and I love this primitive fishing kit slash survival kit because that's what it really is and I will make another video when I finally can go fishing with this because right now in April most of the fishing grounds are closed because of the breeding of course. Alright so thank you for watching and stay tuned till next time.